Assalamu alaikum fam, hope you're doing well. So, I'm gonna do a walk and talk with you. You know I love doing those. Plus I like the sound of the cars. So, I don't think Trump should win in 2024. And hear me out, right? People keep talking about it and I wanna give my two cents on it because I think people are missing a vital point about how much trouble that would cause. So, in 2016, there was a big backlash, right? Then, little by little, the liberals kind of went out of their mind. And I would say that it's not 100% their fault. I mean, he did Trump, you know, bait them. And he was a funny guy, but he, he could have done a couple things different. And I think even he can admit that, that he could have done a couple things that were less inflammatory, you know. But... At the end of the day, he was a bit of a comedian, and, you know, that's what kind of got him elected as an outsider and all that. I know, I know. But here's the thing. Now, we saw how the very far leftists, because remember, there's a difference between a liberal and a leftist, okay? So the leftists, which are communists and anarchists, they are not afraid to voice their dissension, right? And I, in the beginning, had seen more people becoming like little by little more angsty. They were not exactly as calm as they could have been, nor as rational. And then you would see the articles and reports that were less, less favorable, less charitable. You know what I mean? And people started getting more and more angry and more and more extreme and their end of the world, Trump is literally a dictator, blah, 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 just plain insanity. And hyperbole, you know, hyperbole in writing where it's very disingenuous and everything is the crisis, everything is the doomsday. And well, they started censoring his fans little by little. And I'd watch all, because I follow all kinds of people. And to have a balanced perspective, you need to hear so many different opinions. And they were getting banned for so many minor things. And Twitter, really, and Facebook, they purposely started censoring people who were not part of their group, right? So, when there has been more cases of people arguing, there's been more rioting. And we've seen, I thought the rioting in the beginning was a way to really push the envelope to really make change but then it got hijacked by the militant Antifa anarchist atheist group and they made it about their agenda and they really caused some harm okay they really took it over and everything went chaotic which is what happens when anarchists get in the group and it ruined it so I decided you know what I'm not supporting the the pressure campaign that they were choosing right and we know if Trump runs again, man, there's going to be so much rioting. And I can't handle it. I live in an area that will burn. And I live in an area where I'm surrounded by those types. So this might sound kind of selfish. But I don't... I mean, they blocked the roads. Like, to go... Like, one day they blocked the bridge. And I, we had to go around all the way to the other bridge. And it cost a lot of gas money and I had to go through a less safe neighborhood in order to get back to my neighborhood. And it's like, dang, man, if my car breaks down here or something goes wrong and the AAA has to come get me, someone could come and jack me or I could get in the crosshairs of a shootout. This is just not good, man. Like, their leftists are very good at making people inconvenienced. Okay? And the right wing has really become very soft they're trying to do their best but what happened with them is they let too many bravado types like get in and then confuse them with fake uh news drops and things like that where it's like this is clearly fake they got they started to worship trump too much like a cult of personality right and that's what i think led them down the wrong path so if trump runs again we are gonna have a serious censorship we're going to have serious rioting and I can't take it that sounds so selfish 
I just can't take it, man. I mean, if these Antifa militants, they love lighting things on fire, they don't, the news does not cover what they do. They do not cover, and they attack people viciously, man. They're, they are experts at doxing people. I mean, they will dox you, they'll find out where you live, they'll smash up your car, they do a lot of violence, and then the media covers for them, okay? They cover for them. AOC covers for them. Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Bernie Sanders. They cover for them like, oh, they're just this innocent group. And, you know, they just are hanging out and selling t-shirts. Some of them maybe, yeah. But I've gone to school with some of them. And sadly, I've met some people who I really admired. And then they told me they were in that group. And I was like, oh, great. You know, like, dang, man, I'm going to distance myself from you. Because it's, it's too much for me. So if Trump runs again, we're gonna see. I think that's gonna be the breaking point for our country. And I don't want the country to break, but at the same time you have to wonder if that's their agenda goal because they say that that's one of their goals is to dismantle America, to rebuild everything how they want it to be built. And they've done that They've taken over the schools, mostly, many schools. They have the tech on their side. They have censorship and the media on their side. They're slowly getting key strategic points that any logistic strategist, if you're looking in a sort of militaristic way, you can tell that they have got some good ground. And if Trump wins, he's been banned on every platform. And some people who even share videos of him they get their accounts suspended on Facebook. And even when there was Parler, remember? Parler was a good app. It had so much stuff on there against Antifa. And then Google decided to delete that from the App Store. Amazon said, hey, we're not going to host Parler servers on here. And look what happened. You know? Look what happened. They yeeted the app. So it was like, wow. That was so many of the left showing you that they have more power than this one guy Trump and they're gonna do whatever they can to censor people and make it as hard as possible for them to support their candidate because again the meme wars memes were like a very effective way of, of that the right used comedy to ridicule the left and then now if you share a Joe Biden meme you can risk getting suspended so they the, the left even cracked down on comedians that's how insane they've gotten you know, crack down on everyone. And I just don't think it's going to be worth the drama. It's not going to be worth the drama. And you know what the left's going to do? They're going to try to pass bills of censorship. They're going to call everyone who supports him an extremist. Or anyone who sympathizes with them. And I think the left is so militarized now. That they will do a lone wolf attack. Like, if you go to a leftist and they find out you're a Trump supporter at the hospital, maybe they'll hurt you. They find out you like Trump and you go to buy a coffee, they'll spit in your coffee. Which they could have a disease, you know, and you can get sick. They're going to do things like that on their own to anyone who supports them. And they're going to dox people, find out where they live and hurt you. If you raise a flag, they're going to hurt you. They've demonstrated this time and time again. And... The sad part is, is there's so many kind of weirdos on the right that you're like, man, you don't really want to side with so many of these Trump people who worship him. They worship him almost like Jesus. It's a little creepy. They're not just like regular Republicans, some of them. Because there's like the America First crowd, constitutional Republicans, neoconservatives. You have different groups, you know, within the right. But the hard part is, there's also Tea Party members and Libertarians as well. And they're fractured as well. Because I think it's the changing of the guard in our generation. We got the new left rising and we have the old right dying. And look what they do to Rand Paul. Like Ilhan Omar joked about how Rand Paul got a threatening letter and some, I think, some poisonous chemical powder on a letter that went to him. And Rand Paul's been attacked. He, he, he's so brave, that guy. And his dad, Ron Paul, is a total, total OG. He's just amazing. And Rand Paul is so brave. 
But Ilhan Omar is a hypocrite. When AOC lied about being at that building when those attacks happened, everyone was like, oh, poor AOC. But she's never been hit. Rand Paul has taken beatings from people who hate him. And then Ilhan Omar has the balls to make fun of him as a wimp. And you can see the hypocrisy, how they justify their opponents getting violent, but they don't like even mean tweets aimed at them. And this is something that's quite strange. So if Trump runs, we're going to have a big problem. I personally, I cannot afford to move yet. And if these people riot, it's going to be scary. Like there were 600 militarized Antifa members who marched in black block, all black clothing in Oakland. And the media didn't cover it. And they're like, they, they, they're, they don't cover it. And you can see there's an agenda here. And they say, oh, you're, you're this, you're that. We don't see it. But you, I can see the, the media games that these people are playing. And they're not very honest with what the left does strategically. It's very interesting. They have a lot of activists, secret activists. That's why it's important to study communism and how some of their people spread their information. And I think it's okay to be a communist if you want to debate, because I would love to debate some communists. That'd be actually pretty cool, man. Because I know a lot about Karl Marx, you know, Das Kapital and his manifesto. I mean, there are regular communists that you can talk to, but you have to worry about the ones who... They're born into a wealthy family, their parents paid for their college, and they don't know what the real working world is like because their parents have supported them in every way, and they have idealist, utopian ideals. That's what you have to worry about, is when you get into people who are into a utopia. And the working class of the 1800s is a different working class than what we have today. So we have to examine that. Some communists have their heart in the right place, and some Republicans have been too weak on weaving out corruption and monopolization of the free market. This is true. Totally true. Totally true. Right? But we have to be able to talk about it, but the far left has advocated censorship too much, and the right has become intolerant of just basic, like, wage reform and healthcare reform and that causes a problem. So you can see problems from both sides. But if Trump runs again, there'll be chaos in this country. And it'll tear families apart. And the media just will go insane. I mean, CNN, they lost it. Check it out. There's a, some news reports that CNN lost like over 40% of their viewership after Trump uh, is not longer in office. Because that's all they did was do like rage bait against, you know, the orange man. And you're like, well, some of these media companies, they just made so much money off of talking about Trump. So they want their money back, you know? But they made money while also condemning him. So there's a lot of trickery going on. So for me, I just don't think it's worth it. There's, there's DeSantis in Florida. I don't know. I could vote for, I want to vote for Tulsi Gabbard. She's a Democrat. But she's a soldier. I want a soldier. I'm t- I don't want any more influencers like AOC or old decrepit people like Biden who've been in there forever, just part of the corrupt machine. I want somebody who's like strong. That could be a man or a woman, doesn't matter, of either party. Someone who's gonna fix our infrastructure, end our wars, do prison reform, who's gonna, you know, care about the freaking country. But if Trump runs again, there will, be, there will be just too much chaos. And see, that's what the left wants. They made it clear to us. You know? And honestly, I would be afraid for my family. Because I have family who are Trump supporters. And families who members who are all kinds of political parties. But I'd be afraid for them. I, w- I would be afraid. I'd be like, I don't want them to be attacked. And the left just will attack. I mean, I went to a protest in the beginning against Trump when he was talking smack about Mexico. And... I saw how um, there was one Trump guy and people surrounded him like they were going to murder him. And it was just like, this is not, this is not normal. Like we used to have fun, like arguing politics was so much fun, man. It was hilarious. It was so much fun. But now it's like people want something more than just talking. They're ready. 
I mean, they're really ready. And Antifa has more members, but they have secret pockets. See, the conservatives are loud. They put flags on, they wear stickers, you can identify them. They wear hats, you can identify them. They're proud to show you. But the militant Antifa types, they don't show themselves. And they're way more secretive. And they'll sp sprout up anywhere. And so you have to worry about them. And see, the difference is, is like, the conservatives might have, like, loud cowboyish types, right? Who are very, like, handsome men or, like, some fat men or something like that. And the left can have kind of skinny, you know, punk rocky anime, uh, you know, different style of hipsters, you know? Different type of people. But they're not physically strong, but they have tech-savvy skills. And they use different psychological methods and economic means to punish their opponents, whereas a conservative will just fight you, maybe, at a protest, right? But Antifa, they'll try to get you fired from your job. They'll try to find where you work. They'll protest in front of your house. Conservatives aren't going to go to your house, really. They're just going to be like, I don't like you, blah, blah, and then drive away in their car, you know? But... I don't I just don't think it's smart for Trump to run. I really don't. I I I I would be I'm stressed out just thinking about his face on the screen again. Just let him go. He's done. He's gone. Let him go. Move on. Okay? He just just too much it's almost like a it's a cult, man. You got to let him go. Just let him go. He's not let him die in the in the history books. You know what I mean? Move on. There's so many different people in the world. Why do we always want to have the same people? And he's not qualified. And you know the media just makes him look like a fool. It's just not good for the country, man. He lost a lot of his fire, too. And his supporters, a lot of them have been neutered. And don't risk your life and your, 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 your career for some politician like Trump. He's not going to really fight for you, you know? He, he's, he may be in the beginning, but he's not going to do it now, man. He's an old man. Let him be with his family. He shouldn't run again. He's, he's a millionaire. Let him retire with his money and enjoy his life and his wife. And let's get some fresh meat in politics, no matter which party they come from. Because we need change, and Trump's not going to be able to give us the change because too many people hate him. He has to have some love of the people. Too many people dislike Biden, and how is that going? We need somebody who's liked by both sides. And Harris and Biden are not that, and neither is Trump. So, we need something better. You know what I'm saying, fam? What do you think? Should Trump run again, or should we or should we put him in the history books, like what I suggest?